All right, uh, yep, last time we did it, didn't have any sound, so we're gonna try this again. Ambiguous case, oops, case of the law of signs. Yes, that says signs. So, <clears throat> to best identify or most easily identify the ambiguous case um, if, is if you were to get the following pieces of information. It wouldn't have to be A, B, or C specifically, but this particular situation exists. You get an angle and the length of two sides. And so, for instance, it would be this side and that angle and this side, and we would call that situation two sides and a non-included angle. So in other words, you get one of the matching pairs, A and A, and a different side and a different side. So that could be C as well, or this could be big capital B and lowercase b, and this would be big C or big, or excuse me, lowercase c or lowercase a. Uh, what does non-included mean? Well, that really means this, or it means the opposite of this. If you had this side, a, this side, b, and this angle, let's say q so I don't get screwed up with the lowercase c, uppercase c, that would be two sides and the included angle or angle in between. Okay, so included angle, but this is the ambiguous case. So how do we go about solving the ambiguous case? Well, there's a whole bunch of different places you can go and look up videos, go online, etc., etc. And the first thing they'll start out with is a discussion or a treatise about how to determine how many solutions there are for a particular law of signs problem, specifically the ambiguous case because the ambiguous case can give you either one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. Okay, so sometimes the sides and that angle do not work such that you can have a triangle at all, or there'll be two different angles that could work, or one angle that could work, and the second solution is, is doesn't come out. How we've traditionally done it here in Brookfield, and whether this is correct or not, is could be up for debate, is that we assume that there are two solutions and we proceed to solve. And we do that by building a little table. You don't have to build a table, but I find it easiest to keep track of information and we start solving the problem. So let's say that I started out with angle of 47 degrees, uh, side length of uh, opposite that of 13 and a second side length that is 15. If we were to draw a picture of what was going on, this would be angle A, this would be angle B, and then the side opposite angle A would be, ang would be side A, and so this guy would be 15, this guy would be 13, this angle would be 47 degrees, and we have no idea, no clue whatsoever, the length of this leg, or excuse me, the length of this side. So this would, we're trying to determine when this touches this thing here, what's this angle, what's that angle, and what's the length of that side. It could actually swing down and touch it here, it could touch it over here, it could touch it over there, or intersect over there, et cetera, et cetera, to close off the triangle. But we don't know how that looks unless we took our protractors and stuff and measured everything out. So that takes time and is less accurate, so what we do is we use math. So here we go. Let's set up the first, the first uh, proportion that we can with the two A's and this lowercase b, and note, the first thing we're going to be finding is an angle measure. Angle B is the angle opposite this side B. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to set up. I'm just going to write down, and you guys should write down or copy the law of sines every single time you do it. Write down the law of sines so that at some point in the near future you don't have to spend time flashcard memorizing it, and you'll know it for certain. For this particular usage, I'm going to. Hopefully you know why you can do this, but I'm gonna write this upside down. Sine of B divided by lowercase b is equal to the sine of A divided by the lowercase a. Sine of B is what I'm looking for because I'm gonna to try to find the angle measure. Lowercase b is 15. 
sine of angle A is 47 degrees, and lowercase a is 13. I'm going to now multiply both sides by 15, so I'll get sine of angle B is equal to 15 times the sine of 47 degrees, and that's going to be all divided by 13. So in my calculator, making sure that I'm in degree mode, I wasn't, so here we are in degree mode, I will type in 15 sine 47, close parentheses, enter, divide it by 13, and I get sine of B is equal to 0.84. 3869655. I'm going to, and this is, you guys should all learn how to do this. I'm going to leave all of this in my calculator and I'm going to hit inverse sine because I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. Inverse sine of 0.84, blah, 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 blah. But I'm really going to type in second answer so that it'll bring up the answer that's inside the calculator. That'll create the greatest amount of accuracy. So, Second sine, second answer, 57.6 degrees. B is equal to 57.6 degrees. So filling out my table. This is going to be side A, side B, side C, angle A, angle B, angle C. You can put them in any order you want. I just find this doing it the same way every time is the easiest. This is 13. This represents my first solution. This represents my second solution. So the length of side A is going to be the same no matter which solution because it was given to us. The length of side B will remain the same because it was also given to us. And angle, of, angle measure for angle A will be 47 degrees no matter what because it was given to us. Now we just discovered that B is, angle B is 57.6 degrees. That's for this first solution. For the second solution, we will have to consider something else that's going on. So let's go double screen. Oops, that's from the other file. Oh, that's from the first page. So what is going on here? Remember, when I take the inverse sine of a particular number, in this case it was 0.8438, blah, 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 blah. It could be this angle right where this side which would represent sine because it's the y is 0.84386 blah 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 there is another location where this angle where the reference angle is the same such that the side length well the y value is also 0.8438 blah 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 so these two angle measures are the same the reference angles are the same but of course this angle measure is 57 degrees and this angle measure is going to be 180 minus the 57.6 because this guy is the same reference angle so the reference angles are both 57.6 degrees so this i should change the color maybe this purple angle measure is actually this number which is 122.4 so that's the actual other solution so the idea is this triangle here is triangle number one this triangle over here that has this angle is triangle two these aren't the actual triangles they're just the angles 122 or this acute angle 57 so this is 122.4 degrees now how do we find angle C Angle C, how do we find angle C for either one? That has to be true to triangle sum, meaning these three angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to sum these two guys and subtract them from 180, sum these two guys and subtract them from 180. So let's do the second one first since I had numbers in the calculator. And I get this to be 10.6 degrees. And that's this plus this, subtract from 180, I get 10.6. To get this one, I'll add these two together and subtract from 180. And I get 75.4. Okay? So, 
Now I just have to find side C for both of these two triangles and we will have a solution. So uh, we're going to do the law of sines one more time, this time with side C per angle C is the same as side A is per the sine of angle A. If I fill that in, it's going to be for two different solutions. C over sine 75.4, this is the left, is equal to 13 over sine 47. Multiply both sides by sine 75.4 and I get C equals 13 sine of 75.4 divided by sine of 47 degrees. And I'm going to find that C is equal to 13 times the sine of 75.4, 12.58 divided by the sine of 47. I get 17.2, 17.2 centimeters, inches, whatever the heck it is, light years. Note, you can do a quick check. This is the least angle, that's the least side. This is the, the largest measure angle, this is the longest side. Everything seems to work out. We can check the same thing here once we find out C for this other triangle. Let's do it in purple since I have those two numbers in purple. C over sine C is equal to A over sine A. So C is, I don't know, sine C is sine of 10.6 degrees. Side A is still 13, and so the sine of angle A is the sine of 47 degrees. Uh, multiply both sides by this number, sine of 10.6, so I get C is equal to 13 times the sine of 10.6 divided by the sine of 47 degrees, and I will get C equals 13 sine 10.6. 2.4, 2.39136, blah, 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 blah. Divide that by the sine of 47 degrees, and I get 3.26978, blah, 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 which I'm going to say is 3.3 centimeters, feet, etc., etc. So 3.3. This is the least measure angle by far. This is the greatest, and this is the middle, so it seems to work. These are my two solutions. There are gonna again be situations where you discover there's only one solution. What'll happen is this won't work. You won't have enough angle measure to get a third angle. Boom, the second one blows up. Or you won't even be able to get a single angle measure for angle B and it will blow up. All right, that's it.